Alright guys, welcome back to Strong Successful Mail. So for today, going to go over an email that was sent from a subscriber. This is from a guy, he's sharing his story about events that happened about 15 years ago when he first started college. And about how he met this one woman who became his first relationship and the first girl that he ever had you know what with. And how everything was going great in the beginning as so many of these stories go. But then red flags started to arise. And in some cases, huge red flags. But because he was young, and because he didn't know any better, obviously some of these things he let slide. But then you're going to find out it was revealed that uh, this woman he was involved with, not only was she a uh, single MOM, but she was also married the entire time she was having a relationship with, with this guy. And you're going to see here the way he handles it in the right way, but she doesn't exactly take that too well. And let's just say she went completely nuts on him is an understatement. And so, guys, I'm doing this to show you many lessons here. The importance, obviously, paying attention to red flags, not letting them slide, understanding you got to walk away or, in some cases, run as fast as you can when you see certain red flags. Also, about crazy, obsessive types. There are gals out there, or just like guys, too, that become obsessed with people and they become crazy and you got to watch out for them because they could ruin your whole life okay i'm sure some of you guys have seen movies about people like that and also how important it is to do your homework on people when you get when you start dating them obviously don't rush into a relationship find out who they are and all that especially nowadays when it's not that hard to really find out about somebody and last but not least about manipulation tactics used to get someone uses against you to get your way watch out for that too so that being said Starts off, he says, uh, hey, SSM, how are you? I've been following your channel for a long time now, and I decided to tell my story. First of all, I have to say that English is not my mother tongue, so I apologize for any mistakes I make. Bro, I read your story three times already before doing this, and your, your writing, your English is better than people whose English is their first language. So you did a good job. And just guys, just make sure when you write the stories, just write them out well, and no problem if English isn't your first language. Do your best. Uh, my story happened 15 years ago when I just started college. I am the oldest child of my family and the first to attend and graduate from college in both my dad and mom's side of the family. Mainly because I didn't want to have to do field work all my life and that's why I put all my efforts into my studies. Good for you, man. Very good. I'm sure it wasn't easy. Actually, from what you're telling me in the story later on, it wasn't easy, but you stuck to it. And I know now, at the end of the story, you're doing well for yourself. He says, due to the fact that my family did not have the financial resources at the time to rent a lot in the city where my university was, was, every day I went to classes, I had to take a bus from my hometown to the place where my university was. The trip was two and a half hours one way and the same way back. Five hours traveling to school, to and from school. Bro, that is some serious determination. Good for you. I'm really proud of you. There are people here that wouldn't take a bus 10 minutes each way if they had to. But you, two and a half hours each way, that is determination. Guys, if this guy can do it and find a way, you guys can too. And, and that's just an example of obviously transportation to the school. But anybody that has obstacles in their way to get where they want to be, find a way. You can do it. He says, so I spent five hours along traveling each day. On one of those days, by chance, a woman who I will call Anna asked me if she could sit next to me. Of course, I said yes, and all the way we talked. Then I realized that at least one day a week, our schedules coincided, and we have had to, had to return the same on the same bus. She lived in a town near mine, so she got off the bus almost an hour before me. After some time, we started dating, and everything was very special in the beginning. As I said before, I put all my effort into being able to attend university, so this was my first relationship. Notice he said there about how things were very special in the beginning. That's how it works. He goes on, at first everything was fantastic, but after a while, I realized that she only wanted to spend time in my town, even though I offered her that we would spend time together in her town so that she would not have to travel. Okay, little red flag there. Why is she always coming to my place? How come I can never go to her place? These are things you have to ask. But again, he was young. You know, he sounded like it was his first year of school, so he's probably, I don't know, 18, 19 years old. So believe me, a lot of us aren't that experienced, so it's understandable. But these are things to pay attention to. And again, remember, he said in the beginning, everything was fantastic. He says, but she always refused. At first, I didn't give it any importance, but we kept dating. 
A short time later, our relationship reached the point where we had you-know-what every visit. Again, for a while, everything was perfect. But after some time, she asked me to not use a condom. Okay, that is a giant red flag. Huge, huge red flag. Not wear protection? Any guy, guys, anytime a gal says that, that's time to run. Because, you know, easily you can get trapped. Something goes wrong. And usually that's being planned. A lot of gals will do that on purpose to keep a guy in their life or have ulterior motives. Always wear protection. And I might add, always dispose of your protection, okay? Because I'm sure many of you guys have heard the stories where the gals will do it on purpose for varying reasons. It's crazy what happens. Uh, when she asked me the first time, I can swear I heard alarms in my head telling me not even think about doing something so stupid. Good, you're obviously a smart guy. Uh, being a young man at the time, it was difficult for me to control the desires and urges I felt back then. But in the end, I decided to listen to my alarms in my head. He said, the one that I have on my shoulders. And tell her that I did not feel comfortable doing it without a condom. That I didn't want to risk my future for a moment of pleasure. Bro, you are light years ahead of most guys. Most guys have been like, okay. You know? Or just thought they'd be fine or they could pull out in time or, or listen to maybe she's on the pill. Is it really worth jeopardizing your whole future? Or potentially jeopardizing it because of, as he says here, a moment of pleasure. But a lot of guys don't, you know, don't listen. And by the way, I mentioned this in another video. There was one time, I kid you not, one time in college, I did the same thing. But I didn't listen to the uh, the the alarms going off. I went along with it anyway. And I kid you not, a couple weeks later, maybe a week later, when my girlfriend was supposed to have her monthly friend, as they call it, guess what? The monthly friend was late. And for an entire week, I, th I think it was, Late, late, day after day. I was ready to shit my pants. Okay, I was only 20 years old. And there's no way I was going to be a father at 20 years old. Fortunately, her monthly friend arrived and I got off the hook. And I never made that mistake again. So, don't ever do that, guys. Anyway, he says, uh, it, was, it was from that moment forward that everything got worse. And she didn't speak to me for a couple of weeks. That's called a ma manipulation tactic. You didn't give her what she wanted, so she's going to punish you by all of a sudden disappearing on you for two weeks. And since she was your first girlfriend and first g woman you slept with, she knew darn well the impact it would have. And a lot of guys would cave and break down because of this. Manipulation tactic. He says, that was my first relationship and my first S-word partner. So those weeks seemed like to la seem to last forever. But thank heavens, I met a friend whom I hadn't seen in a long time. And when I showed him my Anna's photo, he stayed with me. Uh, seeing strange, uh, he seemed strange. I finally asked me. He finally asked me if it was really my girlfriend. To which I said yes, but that we had problems right now. Without further ado, he asked me if I knew that she was married and that she had a daughter. So it wasn't crazy enough with the whole "don't wear a condom" thing, but now. You find out that she's married, has a kid all along. Now, I don't know how long he was seeing her where he found this out, but there you go. She's a liar and a cheater. And she's a manipulator. And she obviously wanted to try, probably try to trap you by getting pregnant. This is when you run. The reaction on my face told him my answer. After I got all the information I could from my friend, I called her, and after confronting her with what I knew, she started making excuses that she was getting a divorce, and she, didn't, and she hadn't told me because she wanted to wait until the divorce was complete. Bullshit. You were her side piece. End of story. And you're lucky that her husband didn't find out about you and come after you, and you didn't know. In that discussion, I broke up with her because I told her that I had no desire to be the other man and that our relationship that started with lies always ended badly. Bro, at that young age, you were wise beyond your years. Good for you. Your parents obviously raised you well. Uh, that was how my first relationship ended, or so I hoped. Because later she started calling me every night on my phone, my house, including my parents and my brother. On one occasion, when I answered a number that, I, that she did not know, a man's voice answered me, and after asking for my name, she told me that they were going to transfer the call. After a moment, it was Anna who answered. Psycho, she won't leave you alone calling you at your place, your parents' place, your brother's place. Now she's having some dude call you. Sounds like a collect call or something. It gets worse, guys. 
Before I told her to leave me alone, she began to tell me everything she had done that day. What time I left my house, what bus did I go to the university in, what classroom did I enter in the first class, which one did I go after that, where did I go for lunch, what class did I go in the bedroom after afternoon, and what bus did I take to return home. In other words, she was stalking you the whole day. She told that she told this guy every step of the way what he was doing all day long. Total stalker. I was surprised what I just heard. After that, she threatened me. She told me that if I didn't go back to her, she would go to my university and cause the scandal of my life and make me feel so embarrassed I never wanted to go back to university. Oh yeah, okay, so you're threatening me here, you're stalking me, you're harassing me, so I'll go back to you and make and everything will be great again. See what I'm talking about? Lunatic. What I did after hanging up was to call my university and explain to the security officer what had just happened to me. He asked me to send them a photo of her as and so as to not let her into the university campus. So it's not even being crazy when I go back with her. The uh, security car was like security guards probably like, hey man, I got your back. Bitches be crazy. About a week later, when it was already dark and I had just gotten off the bus in my town after a day at the university, I just wanted to get home and take a bath after dinner. My phone ran out of battery after using it to listen to music on the way back. I was already less than two blocks from my house when I saw Anna. There she was waiting for me on the corner. More stalking. Again, the alarms in my head told me that something was very wrong. I don't know why I did it, but I took out my phone, and even though I had no battery, I pretended to send a message. Then I approached Anna and asked, asked, him, asked her what she wanted. She told me that if I didn't go back with her at that time, she would go to the police to file a report saying that I had uh, done something to her and various other things. Psycho. That surprised me and I claimed that she was lying because I had never done anything like that. But Anna laughed and said that it didn't matter that in this world, the police always believed the woman without, without even any evidence and that she would ruin my life if I didn't go back with her. Again, after all this, like you're just going to go back and act like everything's all right. But when you're dealing with somebody that's mentally ill and a complete wacko and amongst many other things, that doesn't exactly compute. At that moment, I took out my cell phone and told her that I had just recorded everything. As I said, my cell phone was without battery power and I was just bluffing while I asked the heavens if she would believe me. I also told her that I would send a copy of the recording to my uncle, who was a lawyer, so that this time I would be the one to file charges against her for defamation, extortion for presenting false testimonies, if she did not leave me alone. Again, I was bluffing since being the first of my family going to university, so I did not have any lawyer in the family. Thank heaven she believed me. After cursing me, she left, and I never saw her again. Although for the next few weeks, I was very worried that she was trying to do something. Dude, that was some very good quick thinking that you had there and a good bluffing skills. And I don't blame you at all because some of this wacko, next time you know, you could be walking home and she might jump you, you know, from, from behind a freaking uh, a car or something with a weapon. He says, almost 15 years has passed since that experience. I, already gra I graduated university in software engineering and I have not married, but I still enjoy my life. Bro, after that experience, I don't think any guy would ever get married again. Uh-uh. But congratulations on your degree. You're uh, graduating in software engineering. I'm sure you're doing very well, and I think that's awesome. And congratulations for never getting hitched after that whole song and dance. My, advo my advice to those who listen to my story is to always trust your instincts when they tell you something is wrong, and whenever you have to deal with an obsessive woman like Anna, have a backup plan. In my case, outside of bluffing, uh, the next day, I remember the email I sent to the security department of my university with Anna's photo explaining the situation. Luckily, you don't need that plan. Stay strong and goodbye. Well, bro, that was quite the story, and I'm sure you probably scared a few guys straight here. So again, like I said in the beginning, guys, the red flags. Always look out and pay attention to the red flags. And believe me, there are certain red flags that you don't just walk away, you run. You run like your butt is on fire. And when she didn't want to, uh, when she wanted him to have relations with her without the condom, uh uh. I'm so happy this guy had the good sense, even though the uh, his other brain was telling him something that he didn't listen to that one. And he realized why jeopardize the future or potentially jeopardize it for a quick moment. But a lot of guys wouldn't have done that. And you always wear protection, guys. You always dispose of your protection. And then all the other red flags you had. And in fact, the whole time, 
She was lying to him. She had a husband and a kid. And the sad thing is, that little kid, that's his mom. And that, she's going to mess up that kid. And for all, for all you know, the guy that she married to, he's probably a good guy. But she's cheating on him. So, but people like that don't change. And the odds are she just probably found somebody else and ruined their life. But I'm so glad that you dodged that, that big one big time. And you moved on. And to no surprise... You still never got married. So I wish you all, all the best in the world. Hope things go well, and I appreciate you sharing your story. All right, guys, that is it for today. Be sure to comment down below. Let me know what you think about this. Guys, in the comment section, let me know if you ever had an experience with a crazy type like that that just that stalked you, amongst many other things, made crazy threats. I'd like to hear out in the comment section. And, guys, also, if you got a story like this one, about something like that that happened, email it to me. Tell me your story. This one happened to him 15 years ago. So I don't care if it happened last week or 15 years ago or 30 years ago. Send your stories. Write out in good detail. If it can help guys out or if it's entertaining, send it my way. And be sure to like the video, share with your friends, and subscribe. And I'll catch you next time.